Hello guys, hope you're doing well and as always, if you are new to my channel, I would humbly request you to subscribe to my channel so that you shall be able to watch all the latest engineering videos that I will upload on my channel. Okay, so today the problem at our hand is we will going to do the analysis, a truss analysis of an aeroplane wing drag truss. Okay. So here we have uh, our truss, which is being enclosed within the aeroplane's uh, wing. And uh, there is a lateral loads being applied below it, 80 pounds, 80 pounds, 60 and 40 pounds. And uh, it is being on, uh, on the lower side, a pin is being attached. And on the other side, a roller is being attached. And we need to calculate uh, the reactions of the pin and the roller. And we also need to calculate uh, the forces in member uh, BC, BH and HC. Okay, so we also need to calculate these forces and uh, we also need to calculate the reaction forces of the supports. Okay, so uh, this is our problem at hand. So what we will do now is basically we will go to, we know that uh, these are the, uh, the lengths between the two respective uh, uh, what points A and B is 2 feet, distance from B to C is again 2 feet, C to D is 2 feet, D to E is 1.5 feet and the vertical height of the truss is 2 feet. Okay, so we will try to transform these feet into inches. So even we know 1 feet is equals to 12 inches and we we'll put the coordinates in terms of inches. Okay, so and again we will go to inches and uh, when we go to NSYS, we will write it as a structural analysis. And then we go to P processor, we select the respective element. For truss, it is since it is an uh, axial member, it is basically, it, it can function as a strut, it can function as a tie. So we'll use the link element. Okay, it can either be undergoing tension or it will be going under compression. So we select a 3D finite strain 180 link element. It's called as a uh, symbolized as ling vertity. Then we'll try to select the uh, rail constants. And we will say that uh, assume that the rail constant is again one inch square. Okay, so now we go to the material properties, material models, structural, linear elastic isotropic and we will say as 36 and we'll do it as 0.3 as the Poisson's ratio. Now this is being done. Now we'll go for modeling and uh, we'll try to create the nodes. Okay and uh, we must remember that uh, when we will be creating the nodes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten nodes will be generated. So okay, we'll say in the in active coordinate system, the first node will be again it will be given as zero zero zero. Okay. So now, when we will be selecting the second node, we want it will be the second node will be at twenty four and zero. The third node will be at 48 0 the fourth node will be at 72 0 the fifth node will be at 90 0 the sixth node will be 0, 24, 2 feet is 24 inches in depth, 
So the seventh node will be 24, 24. The eighth node will be 48, 24. The ninth node will be 72, 24. And the tenth node will be 90, 24. All right. So these are the nodes. You can see these are 10 nodes. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So these have been generated. Now we'll try to create the elements out of it. The attributes is link 180. And uh, let's start doing it. To create these elements. 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, then this, and this, then the vertical members the cross now the angular members All right, now this has been done. We can make it more better and more better by numbering them. We can say there are node numbers and element numbers to be clearly different. So when we say plot, this has been done. So this is the element one, two, three, four, and these are nodes one, two, three, four, five. These are the nodes. Okay, so now we will go. For the loads, define loads, apply structural displacements, and it will be applied on the nodes. So this is going to be applied. It will be all degree of freedom. You can make it as zero if you want. And the other one. It's going to be along the X. So this has been done. Now we'll be going to apply the uh, the force loads. Forces loads are defined as 80, 80, 60, 40. So, on the nodes, this will be on the Y, positive Y, 80, this will be also 80, and uh, this will be 60. And this will be 40. So let's say now everything is complete. We have pre done the pre-processing. We applied the materials. We applied the, the modeling phase is complete. The materials defined, the constants defined, the elements defined, and uh, the structural constraints defined, forces defined. So now we shall be going for the solution phase. 
and uh, so all the current ls means load steps so it has been completed and now we go to plot replot and uh, we can go for the general post processing plot results deformed shape so this is the deformed shape as a result of the forces we can see it and uh, if we want we can see how it is being Let's see how the forces are basically deforming this aeroplane wing directors like this. We can say now about the elements and uh, we can go for the nodal solutions, displacement along x. These are the pure displacement along the x-axis. The maximum value is this 0.3762 to minus 3 along the x-axis. What about displacements along the y? This is 0 0.00521 of an 8 inch and the resultant displacement of x and y is this 0 0.005251 of an inch. This is the maximum area of displacement. Now this has been done. Now we can go to the another phase in which we will be make it more simple as make the elements here. Plot uh, the results. This has been done. List results. We can go for uh, the reaction solutions. And we can see what is the reaction solutions. Total uh, basically reaction will be here and here. And uh, these are the reactions. Okay, so if you look at it very clearly, uh, this is node one. This is our node one. Remember node one, node two. Node one was the pin. So there is one reaction along the x is minus 570, and at node one along the y it is minus 260. So if you look at my picture here and uh, if we go at uh, the analysis that we have done before is again node 1 is 570 and node uh, along the x and at, at the same node along the y it is minus 260 and minus 570 and the other node is plus 570. So when we come to here with this this uh, node 1 minus 570 minus 260 and this node 6 it is 570. The previous analysis were done on MDS. These ones are done on NCIS. So we have done it correctly. Now you can also see if you want to calculate the nodal loads, how the loads are distributed. These are the nodal loads at node 1. He's telling you the loads are these are the loads at node 2. It was minus. It was in reaction. These are the reactions, nodal reactions. Okay. So minus 80 minus 80, minus 60, and minus 40, just opposite to what we have defined as the vertical loads that were given. And direction that node 6 was minus 570. So everything is in order. So now we can basically go to the, uh, what is called as the, Element table data, we can look at mobile loads. These are the element table data.
and we can go for, we want to know what is the value of the forces are stress at this point this this cross this cross and this cross we can go here as element solution and we say stress because force per unit area will give you the stress value so we can calculate uh, if we're interested in y so these are the values of the stress that are being generated so the because he is asking for the values in this diagonal process 15 16 and 17 so let's see the element 15 okay so in element 15 this is the element 15 element 15 it will be between node 2 and node 8 it is 254.56 254.56 so if we have done it correctly you can see it is 254.56 between node D and H and uh, if you go to the element uh, 16 element 16 if you go to element 16 it is 141.42 between nodes 3 and 9 so let's see element 16 is uh, 141.42 and uh, the last one is 50 the last one is the 50 so let's see what is over here in the load you can see element 17 which is element 17 this is the element 17 and the values are uh, 50 okay the values of the stress which we have done correct perfectly correct these are done by the ANSYS and if you look at it here that uh, this is being done by the software MDS okay this is being done by the software uh, MDS for us and if you can see this is how we have basically done it on the MDS In, this is the software on MDS which I have done it uh, by solving the trusses this is how I have done it on this software so just let you know it's a very good software to solve trust analysis as well so now uh, everything is being done whatever is being asked to and uh, I hope uh, this uh, would have really solved uh, all your queries and uh, how to basically uh, we are getting all the respective outputs out of it and uh, the reactions solutions have also been solved all the respective reactions the pin supports that I have told you before everything is being solved so now I hope uh, this detailed and trust analysis has really clear your concept of how to solve a trust on ANSYS and you can also be compare this trust analysis uh, analytically and apart from that if you look at it over here uh, I have shown you that uh, I have in my previous video this video you of uh, you can also compare it for airplane wing drag trust analysis video which I have done it on my uh, a bit previously in the uh, trust analysis folder you can always compare because it is exactly the same problem done on Mac, uh, MDS solid and here I have done it on ANSYS for you so I hope uh, this concept is cleared and uh, I would thank you uh, thank you very much to all uh, and as always please take care of yourself because you are worth it and you have a wonderful day. Thank you.